Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Combining Arduino, Android, and the Cloud, part one. So this is part one in a three-part tutorial. So if you saw my last video, I talked about how to make an Android app to control and get data from a Wi-Fi enabled Arduino, which is great. But the problem with that approach that I showed is you can only really use it locally on your local network. Once you leave your local network because of features on your router such as firewall, you can't access it from you know, down the street or in another state or in another country. So in this one, we're gonna look at using the cloud and this is great because it allows you to get to do it securely but also to get past the security features on your router. So to keep your network secure, to allow you to access and control Wi-Fi enabled Arduinos and also, if you're using a bunch of them, it's much easier to have the cloud as an intermediary rather than try to connect to each individual one. So this is gonna be part one in the three-part series, uh, or tutorial series, I'll say. And then I'm also gonna have a larger series playlist on my YouTube channel about Wi-Fi IoT. And it's gonna include this three-part series, it's gonna include my last video, and then it's also gonna include things like how to save power when you're using sort of a Wi-Fi network for IoT applications. So a lot of different topics will be on that series and playlist. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so what's the plan? So the plan is we're gonna send data to the cloud using two different Arduino Wi-Fi platforms. Now, the whole plan of the three-part series, this is just planned for part one, is to basically have Wi-Fi enabled Arduinos send data to the cloud, be able to access it on an Android app and then also be able to control those devices from the same app using the cloud. So that's the whole goal. We're just gonna look at how to send data from the Arduinos to the cloud in this first part. Here's what we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using the Arduino Mako 1000. And for the code for that one, it should also work with a Arduino with a Wi-Fi shield, although I haven't tried it. Then I'm also gonna be using SparkFun's The Thing, and that uses the ESP8266. So I wanted to get the ESP8266 board in the mix, because I know that's a popular platform for Wi-Fi in the maker community. So I wanted to show it with, with both these platforms and with more than one, I'll call it node. And then for the cloud tool that we're gonna use, we're gonna use an open source cloud tool that's free from SparkFun called Font. So I know there's a couple now uh, cloud platforms. Some of them are for pay, uh, some of them are free. There's an Arduino cloud. I really like the SparkFun one. So you can access your data, you can send it there, access your data, you know, they have, they have documentation on how to use it. And what's also nice is it's open source. So you can actually download the code and create your own web server or cloud server and leverage their software. So, Right now we'll show an example Example where well, they're running the, you know, the software, but if you wanted to use this in a, in a real application where a real commercialized product, you could actually leverage their software. Here's just a picture of my hardware setup. You can see the Maker 1000 on the bottom, which I do sell on my site, forstronics.com. And then I have the SparkFun thing up, up front that's running the ESP8266. So I will say, I know there's a lot of different iterations of the ESP8266, different boards. I've not gone out there and tested every single one. I'm just using the SparkFun thing. I know there's different Arduino bootloaders out there. You should be able to get an Arduino bootloader for whichever one you have. But once again, I've not tested every one. Okay, here we are at the SparkFun cloud, I'll say interface or introduction page. And it's, it's the web address is data.sparkfun.com, as you can see right there. And from here, we can do a couple of things. We can explore public data. So you, you can actually look at streams that are public. You could actually make your stream public and, you, and other people could look at the data you're collecting. They have documentation on how to use it. They actually have information on how to deploy your own copy of the font on a server. And then here they want to, here is a, where we're going to start, where you can create a stream. So I'm not going to go through everything on this, this website, but this is the important thing is how to create a stream. So here we're at the interface to create a stream. And this is your stream that you'll define here. And what you do to create the stream is you give it a title. You might describe what it is for your own reference. You can make it visible, meaning it's a public stream. So everybody can see your data. They can't 
do anything to your data, but they can see it, or you can do it hidden. Fields, the fields are the important thing. So let's say you wanted to log temperature from a sensor one. You might have a field that's temperature sensor one, and then temperature sensor two, and so on and so forth. And for each one of those fields, that's a that's basically a you can think of it as a queue or or a an array to hold your your data and the cloud will store your data or font will store your data on the cloud you can then access that data on other devices so that's what the field is defining and you can name the different fields now one thing that happens when you create all this and we're not going to look at it when you do the save the font software is going to give you some keys it's going to give you a public key and a private key these are you can think of them as passwords and they basically allow you to do secure communication. In fact, the important one is your private key, but those are what you use in web addresses or I should say web messages, get and post type commands that allow you to put data onto your stream so no one else can access it or break into it and get data from your stream. So it creates these, these keys that only allow you to access it. So once you create your stream, you wanna make sure you store those keys in a safe place. Okay, let's look at the example of my stream. So I'm gonna have my key blurred out in the web address or I, I won't even allow you to see it, but basically the address or the web address I use to access this data involves one of my keys. And so what you can see here is I have a stream, or actually this is my stream, I have a field called ADC data, and then I have a Wi-Fi node. So ADC data is pretty self-explanatory. It's my ADC data from the, each one of the Arduinos and the way I tell them apart is I named one one and I named one two. So I can tell them apart by those. Now, they're actually running right now. So if I hit refresh, we'll see the data because I just started it up and I just cleared my data. So you can see five different logs and you can see the times that these are actually in, in uh, Greenwich Mean Time. But once my, my other ones load, you'll see a lot more data because I'm basically logging data to the stream every 15 seconds. Okay, here we go. We can see a bunch of data here now, and you can see the, the nodes are going back and forth from two to one. I think one is the uh, ESP8266, and two is the Arduino Maker 1000. And all I do is I have the VCC connected up to their ADC pin. That's why you're seeing this max value. And notice the max value for them is a little different for each, but Anyway, in the future, we'll turn this into real data. Right now, it's just example data. Okay, from here, let's go look at the code from the Arduinos on how we did this, how we communicated with this cloud service. Okay, here we are with the code for the ESP8266. Notice that it has its own Wi-Fi library that's actually different from the Maker 1000's Wi-Fi library. I include the font library, which basically is a library from SparkFun and it allows you to, e to easily build the strings you need to communicate with their cloud service. So here you're going to want to replace these with the network name of your router and your password. I initialize some, some pin values and my node number. Here you're going to use your the security keys that you got from the when you created your stream on the font server. So here's the address, here's your keys, public and private. I don't wanna have mine there. Here's my refresh rate, so I'm gonna send data every 15 seconds. Something to note is they only allow you to send up to 100 streams every 15 minutes, I believe, and I, I could be wrong. So you can't just you know post a ton of data all the time, and they actually have limits on how much data you can log there, and after you've reached that limit, I think it's 50 meg, you just start overwriting your earlier data. Here I do some initialization work. One of those things is connect to Wi-Fi. Once I get in the loop, I just kind of run a timer. So every 15 seconds, I'm gonna call, well, not this function, but this function right here, post to font. So here is my connect to Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna go through this too much. They have plenty of examples on how they do this, but and I have comments here. Here's my initialization for the hardware. Here's the important function, and this is what's called every 15 seconds, it's post to font. We have an indicator, we use the LED to indicate that we're gonna do a post, we turn it on, we do the data, then we turn the LED off. This is where you declare the library object and you feed in your 
the font host, that web address, your public key, and your private key. Here's where I create the data streams or the fields, I should say. One of my fields, remember, is called ADC data. So whatever your field is called, you would fill it in here. I then do an analog read from the analog pin. I then tell them the node number. So once again, this is the field name on the font server, and here's the data for that field. And all this font.add is doing is creating a, a string. Next is when you get into web stuff. So here's where you declare your Wi-Fi client. Here's where you declare the port, which is port 80, which is the common port for internet communication, web communication. You then connect and make sure your connect works. If it doesn't, you just return zero. You then print. So font post takes the, the, the strings you, you made earlier for your fields as well as the addresses you need. And I'll show an example of this. This is basically just creating all the communication strings that you need and then printing it to the web. That's what client.print is doing. Then we check if there's any data that's returned. There shouldn't be, so I just I don't print anything out. And then I turn my LED back to low. So that is the code for the ESP8266. So when we saw that long list of streams on font, this was the code that was running to get it up there. Now let's look at the code for the Maker 1000. Okay, here's the code for the Maker 1000. You can see my library is different because we use the Wi-Fi 101 library. Here once again is your network and your password for your router. Here I declare some LEDs in my node number variable. Here's where we have the, the font host address as well as your public key and private key. You need to fill those in here. These next variables, it's a little confusing. So what happened was is my my code would not compile with the font library. So if you notice, I don't have the font library. It would not compile for the Maker 1000 on my computer. And I, it was something because it was missing in the program space.h document that the font library uses. So I didn't do a lot of digging into it. All I did was take some pieces out of the font library and put it directly in my sketch. So that's why I'm doing these declarations here. I could actually probably reduce some of these, but I just sort of copied straight out of the library. So notice I'm not using the font library here. You can see these variables, once it, which once again came from the library, are just creating some strings that they'll use for sending data. These variables are the same. I'm setting up LEDs. The, the one difference though with the Maker 1000 is I actually run serial. So the Maker 1000 will not connect until you turn on the serial monitor. And I just did that so you can see what's happening on one of them. And all you're really getting is the web status. Once it connects and starts printing out data, you're not gonna see anything else on the serial monitor. If you don't wanna to have to worry about the serial monitor opening up every time you run this, you know, just comment out the serial, the serial stuff. Here we check for the shield. Here we connect to your router at home and then we print the status of that. Then the loop here is exactly the same from the other one. And we just go every 15 seconds, then we post the font. You should recognize this function. Here I'm doing the exact same thing, except some of the functions are a little different because we're using a different Wi-Fi library. But we create our, we initialize our font, and once again, this is not a library, I have the functions below here. I do my font adds, so I create the, the field as well as the data for that field, and I create a string from that. I then declare my Wi-Fi object or my client object. I then connect, I then post to font, I then see if there's any data being returned. I don't do anything with that data. I then here, this is an important distinction. You need to stop your client or else you'll create too many clients and you won't be able to connect anymore. This function was for printing the Wi-Fi status. These functions here are the functions I grabbed from the font library. So the font library would not work with the Maker 1000. So these I grabbed, I didn't really alter them much. I just kind of left them the way they are so there can be some optimization done here. You can see in the font add, that's where you actually create a string and then this font post, and I'm not gonna go through this in detail, this is where you're creating your, you know, your web address or web communication to send to the server to post your data. So that is the code and I'll post this code to my blog so you can grab it. Here's one last slide I wanted to show. I did capture some communication going from the Maker 1000 to font. And I just wanted to show you what's happening. So 
basically it lists the hosts and then it sends this data and I just realized this is showing my private key so I'll blur that out but it posts the data it then you know controls the connection sends the data here's actually the data right here and then it closes the connection so that's it for part one and in part two we're going to look at how to grab the data on the cloud so we already have the data now we showed talked about how to put the data on the cloud we're going to talk about how to access that and we're going to talk about an android app design using mit app inventor that we can create to access the data and display it now if you want to work ahead you could always go to to the spark fund website uh, data.sparkfund.com and you can actually look at some of the commands to pull data from there because that's what we're going to be doing next one as well as the android app and then in part three we'll talk about doing communication from the android app to control the arduinos if you have any comments or anything to add related to this please do if you have time check out my store forstronics.com and i'll see you back here for part two thanks for watching